How do you fight a major gas plant that's already been approved when there are plans, permits, power companies eager to put shovels in the ground? Four years ago, Wisconsin's Public Service Commission gave the green light to a group of power companies that wanted to build a large methane gas plant on the banks of the Namaji River near Superior. At the time, Superior City Council unanimously supported the project, but it didn't take long for opinions to change, for a growing number of residents and local lawmakers to start saying no. On this episode, I'll talk with a local lawmaker who at first supported the plant and is now helping lead the charge to stop it. Find out what has changed. I'm Amy Berrio, and this is State of Change from Clean Wisconsin. The Magi Trail Energy Center. It's a pleasant sounding name for a large 625 megawatt methane gas plant planned by Minnesota Power and Dairyland Power Cooperative near the state line in Superior. But there is a growing tide of opposition. Joining me is City of Superior City Council member Jenny Van Sickle. Tell me about this area where the utilities want to build their plant. So this is an area, um, you know, on the Namaji River. And, you know, this is an area that has absorbed a lot of industry over the years. And people might be familiar with this area because it's, um, it boundaries the St. Louis River area of concern. So this area has, has had its fair share. And, um, you know, they purchased this, it's about 20 acres on a bluff. What makes the area very unique and has, um, spurred, you know, tribal opposition. Four tribal nations across three states have spoken out on the placement of this gas plant, not only because it's less than one mile from Lake Superior um, near this very fragile estuary, um, it is also about 150 feet from a mass grave. And that is heinous on its own, but the reason that it's so significant is, um, you know, at the turn of the century, U.S. Steel comes to Superior and, you know, big dreams and big promises in the name of economic development, um, and they'd like to build an ore dock on Wisconsin Point. And, um, you know, as it as it is, you know, officials trip over themselves to do everything they can to get this done. And, you know, this is going to save the community or this is going to really prop us up. And um, so, you know, the um, chief Joseph Osagi, who is famous for being a signatory of the 1854 treaty, um, you know, his descendants fight this ore dock being built on Wisconsin Point, which is um, a sacred, beautiful place. And um, they lose, they lose that fight. And the judge um, puts a boundary on where can be developed. It puts a boundary um, excluding a sacred burial ground. The city of Superior um, is quoted saying something to the effect of nothing is going to get in the way of this development. So um, they they um, they challenge that boundary and win, and that uh, turns into nearly two hundred Ojibwe people being disinterred from their final resting place, including Chief Osagi himself. They load up the remains um, by the hundreds and um, and reinturn them in a mass grave on the river. And that is the 150 feet from this now proposed site. And it's it's such a dark second side to this coin. And I cannot think of an easier legacy to end. This action was taken by the city of Superior more than 100 years ago. When you look back on that dark and wrong moment, do you feel some responsibility now as a city official to make sure that Superior lands on the right side of this this time? 
absolutely the city is responsible. And I think what's most terrifying about the current situation that we're in is um, how easy it is to be complicit because, you know, they embed these representatives in your community. Um, you know, it's like they almost get assigned to you and, you know, you start to forget why they're actually in your life. And, you know, these, these representatives um, take seats at every table you're at and they follow you on social media and they're so friendly. I really think that it starts to feel like, you know, these representatives are like we have disassociated that like you know Jen is going to go build a house on the river and that is not what's happening right and um you know the city of superior did did do what we could to be accountable to that um to that crime against humanity and we worked very hard over you know i mean the osagi family the descendants have worked over 100 years to get this correct um but you know i when i you know i think i think i'm the first um the first native woman elected to this body to represent wisconsin point and um you know we did work very hard to return the land not only the sacred burial ground at wisconsin point but also working with the church to return the mass grave to Fond du Lac, to the nation of Fond du Lac. Um, and now, you know, one year later, here we are. And what's, what's upsetting about it is, you know, seeing clear eyed people, good people, not recognize that, um, you know, their ask is, is unconscionable in the tribe's words, it is unconscionable. Um, and it's really easy to take yourself out of that, out of that story. But as an elected official being asked to do this, we are being reinserted in that story. Opponents of the plant also have concerns about the environmental harm, the you know sensitive waterways nearby, the air pollution and carbon pollution that come with burning methane. But I think supporters might say, look, we need the energy. Gas is so much cleaner than coal and fears of this being a harm, of it being an intrusion are overblown. What's your reaction to that? You know, I think I think many doctors would agree it's better to get stabbed than shot. But what's really important to remember is first of all, let's call it what it is, it is fracked gas. This is not, you know, coming down from the heavens on unicorns. This is fracked gas. It is a violent process. Um, and the process of having it fracked and distributed, as the EPA will tell you, is horrifically poison. You know, I think, you know, if coal plants are as bad as it gets and those are closing, this seems to be the now worst possible way to get to produce energy. You know, I, I'm not I'm not here to debate energy policy. What I'm saying is the step the site is a non-starter. And I um, you know, I was I was I was very, very early in my public service and I never could have I wish I didn't say anything at all. And it's um, you know, I look back on that decision with a lot of sorrow. Um and, you know, it's difficult to hear the utility say unanimous resolution. It was 2019 and um, it, was, it was a bad decision, an, an uninformed decision. So um, it's, it's also a massive gas plant, you know, 625 megawatts. Uh, so they claim, you know, you know, their story changes here and there, but that is a massive, massive gas plant on uh, on the bluff of a river. You know, we don't let people build decks or greenhouses in those places. We have the proof, right? To to then, you know, uh, at, at their um at their expert engineering's opinion, it's fine. But we've seen their experts be wrong so many times. You know, another example is their expert saying the the wetlands there are, you know, garbage and full of invasives and no rare species. And then to really get into those receipts and see how how advantageous those assessments were to their client. 
from the outside, it feels like there's a change happening in Superior, where maybe back in 2019, folks thought, okay, we'll accept this gas plant. We can make some revenue off of it, maybe get some jobs. And here we are in 2024, are people in the community saying, wait a minute, we don't feel like we want this here. This isn't going to benefit our community like we hoped it would. Yeah, you know, I think the, you know, when we look at state policy, um, you know, no gas plant, you know, pays taxes. So I think that's straight away something to clear up. This is not a, a um, this is not a facility that will pay taxes to the city of Superior. The state of Wisconsin in 2009 uh, created a flat per megawatt formula. So um, as the city's expenses rise every single year, salaries, equipment, um, public safety, fire, um, this will stay flat. So it's really, you know, it's, it's, it can be akin to a decreasing payment and, you know, the state is really clear. They provide a utility aid payment um, to offset costs. So straight away, we know, you know, you're never in the black when it comes to a utility. Um, you know, Minnesota Power has raised its rates twice in 2023. We know that the community of Beloit, three years after they opened a gas plant there, they proposed the highest rate increases in the state. We know that just alone, based on the average increase of Minnesota Power's um, in, you know, increase that takes effect this month, so, so Minnesota Power owns our utility, so that is where we get our power, if you're wondering how does that affect Superior, Superior Water, Light, and Power, okay? So just based on their rate increases this year alone, the citizens of Superior will send one and a half million dollars extra over to Minnesota Power this year alone. So they're estimating in 2028, we might get $800,000 a year. There is no benefit, there is no gain. Now, when you talk about construction, um, absolutely people will be able to build something. But as a public official, it's my job to look into that space just beyond construction and reckon with what is it we are left with. And that to me is not enough. You know, in 2019, Minnesota Power promised 260 jobs at peak construction. They also went on to attest in 2021, that number had dropped to 150 jobs at peak construction. And at the first whiff of controversy, the first whiff of opposition, that number suddenly ballooned to 350. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised because their, their information has been egregiously inconsistent over the years. Clean Wisconsin has been fighting the Nemanji Trail Energy Center in court since 2020. The case is currently at the Court of Appeals, but it can seem like an uphill battle. You know, you have PSE approval, you have the Federal Rural Utility Service considering a $350 million publicly subsidized loan to help Dairyland pay for the gas plant. Sometimes it feels like when power companies want to do something, they basically get to do it. Um, what in your mind needs to happen for this plant to not get built in Superior? You know, I think them um, sticking to a statement that they will respect the city of Superior is important. They have spent a lot of time saying that Superior is their backyard too, and that we have such a close, close community partnership and that's why they chose us. Um, if that is true, I look forward to working on the next project. If it's not true, I suspect they'll haul us into court. So which is it? You know, the city of Superior has been, has been left in a lurch. And just like the community of Beloit, that is also a border community, also on the outskirts of the state, that's unacceptable. When we point out inconsistencies and falsehoods, 
there is a tendency for people to say, oh, we're so far along. And if the oversight had met the standard that everybody's claiming, I don't think we would be this far. And we're the last line of defense to protect our, our, our sacred spaces, our water, our air. And I know that sounds really fluffy, but here's the truth. This gas plant will push Superior to the absolute threshold, the absolute ceiling on our, our allowable pollution. So it's, it's accurate to say how anti-development this plant is because it'll be our last. What needs to happen next? How can people both in the community and outside of the community make a difference in this? The Army Corps of Engineers has not issued a wetland permit and the RUS has not issued the public money that the EPA has warned them from issuing. There are, there are levers. Learning what this is rather than the sound bites and the disinformation is going to be really important. I I will um, give you sources and let you you know decide. Um, and that's that's ultimately how I came to my decision. You know my my residents in East End are demanding it be stopped. So however friendly Minnesota Power has been, my job, my oath is to citizens. I didn't take an oath to Minnesota Power and I don't intend to start now. What do you worry will happen if this large gas plant gets built on that bluff overlooking the river? I have looked very hard to find any benefit to have it be built in any community, but I cannot think of a more vulnerable site than having it built on a eroding verifiably eroding bluff. You know, FEMA had to step in a few years ago, twice on the Navaji River, very close to this site because a, a home was, was being pulled into the river or that one of our um, main collector roads was um, so badly washed out by the river that FEMA had to supply money to, to rebuild it and reinforce it. Um, I our ordinance say a greenhouse couldn't be built here, a residential domestic little greenhouse because it's too dangerous. I, I can't imagine this is this is stable in, in any way, shape or form. What can people who are listening to this right now do to help folks in Superior who are trying to stop this? You know, I'd love to hear from residents that live by these gas plants. You know, there have been people that have been reaching out all over the state that are tracking their emissions or um, talking about how loud and noisy these are. And, you know, being able to compare what was promised and what actually ended up happening. Um, you know, I've tried to look into some research around, um, you know, edu education investment or um, different, different metrics that would, that would lend any evidence that communities are better off when these are built. I just am not able to find them. Jenny Van Sickle, Superior City Councilor, thank you so much for being a leading voice in this and for talking with me today. Gunakchish, that means thank you in Klinget. Gunakchish, thank you so much. Stopping gas plants like this one is one of our last lines of defense against the worst impacts of climate change. No matter where you are in Wisconsin or Minnesota, there is a way you can help. Right now, the USDA's Rural Utilities Service is deciding whether to give a publicly subsidized loan to Dairyland Power to build the Magi Trail Energy Center. Log on to our website to take action and tell federal officials to stop this public subsidy for fossil fuels. Find out more at cleanwisconsin.org. I'm Amy Berrio, and you've been listening to State of Change from Clean Wisconsin.